one thing that you're famous for since, you know, in these 36 years, you're famous for never missing a single show, which I'm going to be honest, if there weren't video evidence for every single show, I, I honestly wouldn't believe it. Was there any time, there has to have been at least once where you came close to calling a sub or do any particular shows come to mind in that topic? No, no, I, I never did. I played the show with fevers and, um, you know, uh, lots of distressing physical conditions and you know um and you know over the time you, you're going to get sick once in a while but i just i just kept my distance from people and um and made my quietly made my way through the show uh, um you know the best i could you know it's it's a uh, um it's one of the things that you have to do in showbiz, you know, that, but I, I had experience doing that with Tower of Power. There really were no options most of the time with, with Tower of Power. I, I never subbed that show out either. I always, I was, I always, all the gigs we, I made every gig. Um, mm -hmm. I think I missed one gig. My, uh, there was an emergency at home with my wife on our first child uh, and I had to get out of there. I may have missed a show, um, but I think that I think that's excusable one. <laughs> I think that's one where everyone's going to be like, "That's totally fine." I, the 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 day our second my daughter was born, uh, I was in the studio uh, doing a uh, overdubbing a solo. I can't remember what the project was, and um, it was the last song I was playing on. And I I'd done like three solos, and the I had left the phone number uh, with. Um, um, you know, of the studio with her. And she called and said she went into, was going into labor. And, um, and I said, that last solo was great. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think we're going to go with that one. You're like, guys, yeah. I think, I think the work I already did is totally fine. I think I'm, I think I'm good to go. I think I'm good to go. <laughs> you know, but other than that, I, I haven't really, you know, bailed on anything. Uh, did you, but in all those shows that you did when you were, you know, had a fever or whatever, were there any that you were like, really you you were you could you could hear it in your sound that you were you were struggling i i don't know i haven't gone back to listen and i w didn't make careful notes so i wouldn't necessarily be able to tell you know um uh, I, I i can't remember um i mean th that's 702 shows um so far jesus N knock on wood um yeah uh the the and it's a lot, and it's over 36 years. It's a lot to remember. Um, and I don't remember the guest music from four shows ago. So um, um, it's, 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 it, it's difficult, you know. I, and people always ask, you know, was there, you know, a great moment in the show? And it, it, there were, but I seldom remember things. Um, you know, it, it's, it's part of a continuum. Mm-hmm. What point do you become the music di musical director for the show? Um, see, GE left in 95, and um, I took it over with Cheryl. My, my job at the time was, as it is again, is principally uh, directing the band. Um, and by that, I, I don't do that even all by myself. Uh, I, I'm playing the saxophone, so it's very hard for me to conduct and play at the same time. Liam Pendarvis, one of the other music directors, does most of the conducting, um, and we all we all contribute music to it. Eli Brueggemann is uh, sort of the point man for sketch music, and we all participate in those things. But I, I'm back to doing uh, mostly, you know, uh, dealing with the band. But I and I oversee the department. Um, I, I started it when GE left. Cheryl Hardwick and I were the was the team then, and she was doing most of the sketch music, and I was doing most of the band writing. Um, and I, I, I write most of the commercial break stuff and the arrangements for the opening theme and things like that. And um, so, are you are you solely responsible for doing those rearrangements? You, just you go in and say, oh, "This is how we're going to do the, the the theme for this season." Yes. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, w what do you do when you come to go do that? Because the original Howard Shore music is very similar to the theme now, and if and if they even though they're all different songs, they kind of blend in. Do you have any particular things when you go to rearrange it that you say like this has to stay, but this can change and it won't, you know, sound disturbing to to the average viewer. They won't say this. Oh, this is a completely different theme song. Well, there, there's a verse and there's a bridge. 
and mm -hmm. um, and the chord changes for the verse and the bridge stay the same with only minor modifications. Um, so that's what you're hearing. You're hearing the, you know, it, 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 it moves between two different keys. It starts in G and it goes to, as uh, it goes to B flat. Um, um, and, 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 and then goes back again. And I've kept that more or less the same. Uh, we, we modernized it. Uh, we added in, uh, a, 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 a loop track you know like um is that like all the little hi-hats like the t -t 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 shit like that in the background stuff like that there's like some synth things there's there's like some um sound effects stuff there's um you know backward symbols and things like that and um uh some some uh stutter sounds and things like that that uh and and i i i double the horns with synth horns um, to sort of just they're they're mixed sort of back far enough that you hear the horns predominantly, but they provide sort of a, a flangey sort of spread to the horn sound. Um, uh, you know, it's a little it's more it's more enhancement than it is replacement. Um, um, and the and it and it, it it does sort of bring it into contemporary music production, you know, world. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, all, all the acts, most of the acts that do the show travel with uh, backing tracks of some sort. Uh, you know, it, it's pretty standard pop music. You know, the country acts don't all do it. Um, some of the, uh, Sarah Borales didn't do it when she did the show. You know, people who have come from, you know, uh, you know, more acoustically oriented um, styles of music tend to stay away from it. But, but you know, but it does, it's sort of an earmark of the, of the, you know, 21st century production style.